that the Russians ran an extensive information war campaign against my campaign to influence voters in the election. They did it through paid advertising, we think. They did it through uh, false news sites. They did it through these thousand agents. They did it through machine learning, which you know kept spewing out this stuff over and over again. The algorithms that they developed. I get the nomination. So I'm now the nominee of the Democratic Party. I inherit nothing from the Democratic Party. What do you mean nothing? I mean, it was bankrupt. It was on the verge of insolvency. Its data was mediocre to poor, non-existent, wrong. I had to inject money into it. This is the DNC. It's the DNC to keep it going. Okay. Well, that was Hillary Clinton on her excuse tour, and she just can't seem to accept that she did lose. Democrats just wish Hillary would go away, and Republicans wish she and Kathy Griffin would be running mates in the next presidential election. Here with me now to discuss Hillary and her long list of excuses. From thegatewaypundit.com, Jim Hoft. Jim, good to see you. Jim, Hillary, she won't go away. I'll tell you what, if I were a Democrat, I would want her to go away and Chelsea and Bill and all the whole lot of them, Jim. Uh, but as a Republican, I'm kind of hope she teams up with Kathy Griffin or Debbie Wasserman <laughs> Schultz or really any of their obnoxious elitists out there. Would uh, I could think of I could think of a few. Oh, absolutely. It's good to be back with you, Dr. Gina. Thanks. Um, I love the music uh, <laughs> bringing this segment in. That was terrific. Uh, you know, I, I think this is good news for Republicans. We see Hillary completely falling apart. I don't think there's any doubt this woman is nothing but a sociopath at this point. She takes no credit, no responsibility for any of her actions. Um, and it really just a horrible person. And the good news for Republicans is that there are Democrats who are actually pushing Chelsea Clinton to be the next, uh, you know, royalty to rise up in the ranks of the Democrat Party. And that's only good news. For Republicans. I honestly think, Jim, that she might compete. I think she might run against Chelsea in a primary. She has no problem turning on her own. Think about it. You know, she she blamed the DNC. <laughs> we all not know that along with a thousand Russian agents and a few other fantasy types. But she's the one who, you know, yes, she did call Trump supporters uh, deplorables. And yes, she did call all independent voters crazy. Um, but the things she said about Democrats are far worse. She blamed this whole thing on the DNC and she called Democrat voters easy to manipulate and stupid. I mean, those, she saved the worst of the worst for those that are supposed to be her friends. So why wouldn't she run against her own daughter? <laughs> you know, that's a good point. Um, nothing would surprise me with the Clintons. Uh, it's just amazing to see her coming out and continue to talk and rant about her loss. Um, and she's not the only one. Uh, we're, we're seeing Democrats all around us just, uh, you know, imploding, saying ridiculous things, awful attacks. And I think Donald Trump had a good week just because we see that this continued implosion of the Democrat Party uh, it goes on. Yeah. Well, we, we really shouldn't be surprised. I mean, Donald Trump Jr. even tweeted about it. He said he wasn't actually surprised at all. But he did say that, you know, uh, we look back and we see uh, we see her abusing, essentially, the women that her own husband sexually abused. We see Benghazi. There was no apology for that. Illegal server. There was no apology for that. Meeting on the tarmac between her husband and uh, Loretta Lynch during uh, uh, when she was under investigation during the campaign. There was no apology for that. She's not going to apologize for this, Jim. She thinks she is above the rest of us. What's next? Absolutely. She really does. I, I loved what one uh, liberal commentator said after this uh, this uh, scene she made this week. He said, I wish she'd just go back to the woods by Chappaqua yeah. or wherever she's at and get lost for a while. And that would be the best news for Democrats. But uh, unfortunately, I think she's she's still going to be around. And, you know, she really smashed Barack Obama, too, somebody who put his neck out on the line for her. And then to say that he left her with nothing this party was bankrupt, uh, really just ripping into the D DNC, and uh, I'm sure they're not very happy about this.
Yeah. Well, and the DNC Center Run has had m miserable fundraising. I mean, they've, it's been horrid for them. Uh, they can't get any people to their rallies. You and I know good and well our rallies as Tea Partiers. We were just launching that. That was organic. It was real. None of us were paid. We were all paying. I know you remember <laughs> well, and right. many of us still are uh, for what we are very passionate about. But Soros pays their union hack protesters. And then you look at things like Donald Trump's rallies where he gets tens of thousands of people. They stand in line for hours from the time the sun goes down the day before and they have to pay people to be in there. And the Republican Party, meanwhile, is doing great. They're raising money like bandits. And so this really tells you, I mean, without looking even at any of Hillary's excuses, how bad she made things for the Democrats, right? Oh, yeah. What a bankrupt party. I mean, uh, they have nothing going for them right now. And uh, we still see this infighting between uh, the, the factions, Bernie Sanders people and, and the Hillary people. And in fact, there's even a court case that the media refuses to report on. And that is that Bernie Sanders supporters are suing the DNC because they rigged the primary election against Bernie. So uh, that's getting no attention. But that's going on right now as we speak. And that's that's cool. They should. They should. I always think about their time and talents and all that. Anyway, Jim, one of your reporters from Gateway Pundit had some fun today with Kathy Griffin at her press conference. I want to watch that video if we can. Thank you. Uh, this Thank first you. Okay. Of you okay. Lisa okay. What is your opinion of that first amendment sure. expression so you of you beheading Lisa Bloom? Is there a question? Is there a comment you would have about this image of beheading Lisa Bloom? I wonder. This is a first amendment protected expression, and we really ought to make sure that nobody gets bullied as a result of this. And the woman outside that handed it to me, she should not be bullied. Okay, we want to make sure that this First Amendment expression is protected, and I'm sure it can. <laughs> <laughs> Too humorous. Oh my goodness. Now, what was her reaction to that? Well, you know, if, if you notice from the video, uh, the lawyer tried to snatch that little uh, graphic out of my reporter's hands. And thank God he was there. I mean, Kathy Griffin went on and crying and crocodile tears and all that. Uh, how the Trumps are so horrible to her after she put up this obnoxious, disgusting, vulgar image of the of Donald Trump being beheaded, and yet she's a victim. Um, and so thank God I had a reporter there. Uh, Gwilym asked the only question that was relevant uh, about Kathy Griffin's previous statements about Baron Trump, ten year old, the ten year old child of Donald Trump, now eleven years old, and how she's going to attack him. And uh, so. Uh, Anyway, it's just disgusting what's what's going on there. And uh, but he he did a fantastic job. And then at the end, he took over the whole microphone, the whole stage. It was wonderful. You know, thank goodness for people like you out there, as you have been when there was no glory, uh, taking the hits and uh, and turning out the truth. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Gina.